Welcome everybody to Red G Fox. All right, so today I'm still recovering from being sick. If you heard me on the live show last week, uh, my voice was bad. It's getting better, but man, Sunday was awful for me. So uh, I'm doing everything I can to get through this, my voice, everything. But today, it's funny that we're talking about being sick. We got a different kind of sick for Fred. And this one is episode breakdown, tooth or consequences. So in the past, I've talked about episodes that we've gone through that might be not not in the, this is not bottom 10, not even bottom 20. This is, this is a very good episode. It's just, it's a forgotten one. I've had several in the past where I've mentioned, you know, it's not one that I go, hey, let me pull up an episode of one of my favorites or one, if I can only get time for one or two episodes. Tooth or Consequence is not one I pull up. But when you watch it, it is hysterical. So as we're gonna go through it today, we're, we'll hit right to it. We got the fun facts. There's only one, but we also have very many familiar faces, which I can't wait to get to, and another appearance of Bubba as we start to get our regulars coming up. Pretty soon we got, we'll have card sharps right around the corner, and then we're gonna also have Julio coming into the picture. So it's getting big for our channel because we're getting to the big guns, to the more popular characters as we go through it. But in this one, let's start out right away. I love the opening scene where Lamont is trying to cook. You see he's trying to adjust it, the burner in the in the kitchen, and he gets a phone call. My first reaction when I see it is just shut, put it on low or shut it off. But Lamont's trying to get so much done because he's got work to do. So he rushes out and gets the phone and it's Bubba. <laughs> and even though it's just a simple phone call, it's so funny because I can envision Bubba doing this where Lamont's like, yeah, Bubba, yes, he's here, he's awake, Bubba. And he's like, and so you know he's going, well, how do you know he's awake, Lamont? And he's like, because I walked by and I, the snoring stopped and the, the groaning started. So we know that Fred's already complaining about something and we haven't even seen him yet. But then he's like, yes, Bubba, I'm making breakfast. Yeah, Bubba, yeah, eggs. Yes, fried. No hash browns. <laughs> it's so good. Because Lamont is such a, the actor, Damon Wilson, this is some of my favorite Lamont, even though he's a little grouchy. Season two, he's better than season one, in my opinion. But he's so fast. He's so, I just get this like excitement from him as opposed to season six, where he's more mellow and he kind of like, maybe he's just, he's already got a feel for the character and he's just walking through some of it. Uh, this feels like, man, this is like prime Lamont. And so as he's getting there and he's like, yeah, Bubba, yeah, I got to go, Bubba. He hangs up and he runs in. And as soon as he gets in the kitchen, the, there's smoke everywhere filling. And you can see Lamont even makes a little gesture where he's like that. He's ticked. He's mad. And it shows such emotion. And I really like Lamont like this. He shuts off the pan. And now he's furious because he shouldn't even be doing this. And then we see Fred come walking down the stairs. And he's got that thing tight around his, his mouth. And he looks like he's got rabbit ears, as Lamont points out later. And he's coming down. And so now we know, okay, he's got a problem with his tooth either a jaw tooth. If you're a fan of Three Stooges, you know there are many times where Curly would have a problem with the tooth and they would try to pull the tooth out, right? And they'd go through a whole bunch of, they don't do that in this, thank God. But Curly would always have that thing tied around. So the first thing I think of when I see Fred is Curly from Three Stooges. But he comes in and when he walks in, Fred already smells the burnt stuff, the smoke. And he's gonna say, Lamont, what are you? And he's like, don't say it. Don't you even say it, right? And he's, he's like, I'm so mad right now. I burnt breakfast. He's all, why can't you do this, Dad? Why can't you be down here making breakfast for me? You know, I got so many things I got to get ready for to do. And it's your it's your tooth that's hurt, not your feet or your hands, right? He's like, your tooth's hurting, but you can walk around with that thing tied around and still make breakfast. And so he's mad. And Lamont's like, you need to go to a dentist. And Fred's like, I ain't going to no dentist. And he's like, yes, you need to go to a dentist. We need to get this taken care of because we can't, you know, I can't keep doing that. He's like, and Fred, right, was like, I'm not going to dentist. He doesn't like drills. He said, man, they got drills. They got chisels. Uh, or, yeah, chisels to chis nuh -uh. He's a no, no, no. And he's all, and they're not even nice. All they do is they yank you and then they thank you. <laughs> That's a top five funny when he says all that, that whole speech. And Lamont's like, no, come on. We got to do this. Uh, the dentists aren't like that anymore. He goes and he sits down. He's like, the dentists don't do that anymore. It's not like it used to be. And he, he goes, oh, what do you mean? He said, well, now they give you a shot so you don't feel any of that. And Fred's like, oh, now I'm definitely not going. And this is funny. This is a little story with me real quick. The first time I ever had to give a shot for Novocaine as a kid, my mom didn't tell me they were going to give me a shot because she knew I would flip out like Fred is. You know, I used to be as a kid scared of needles. Now I'm not. But as a kid, I was scared of needles. And if you would have told me, hey, they're going to put a needle in my gums, I would have thought that's the most painful thing in the planet. And there's no way I would have let a dentist do it. I would have been kicking and screaming like I did as a little kid. It used to take three nurses to get, give me a shot. 
So Lamont tells Fred, why did you do that? And Fred's like, oh, it ain't, ha no, it definitely ain't going down. I ain't having him stick no needle in me. And he said, I don't want to become like addicted, <laughs> that junkie. <laughs> Not even totally getting it. So typical Fred. And Lamont's like, no, it's Novocaine. And he's like, well, what's that? And he said, so it, it, it deadens, uh, deadens everything in your mouth. And he's all, for, for you, that would be a great thing. And then basically for Fred to shut the heck up and dead his mouth. So Fred's like, no, I'm not going to. Then we get a knock at the door and he he it's he goes there and says, oh, it's Bubba. He said, come on in, Bubba. And so it's so nice to see Bubba. And he comes in and he's got this thing. So like, you got it? And he's like, yeah, I got it, Fred. And he takes it and he goes, whoo, it smells awful. And he's like, well, it's supposed to. He said, that's how you know you got a good batch when it stinks that bad. And he goes, what am I supposed to do? He said, it's an old remedy, right? To, it's it's so funny to see these ridiculous remedies that people would use on things, the superstitious things or their grandma. And it was Bubba's grandma who, who passed it down to him. And he's like, yeah, you got to put it right next to where it is. And he's like, let me look at those teeth. And he sits there and he's all, uh, Fred's all looking in. He's all, man, that's ugly. And he's all, what do you wear? And he's all, right there, the top right, that's ugly. Fred's all, it's on the left. <laughs> so Bubba looks over, he's all, man, that's even uglier. And I love Fred. Fred, top five funny song. Well, is it, at least I'm only ugly on the inside. As a friend, and then you can see Bubba's instant reaction. He's like, from the, you can only see a side view, but he kind of freezes and he gets, like he's upset. And I like uh, Fred's reaction. He's like, I'm just kidding, Bubba. And he does a laugh and it looks like a real life laugh from Red Fox. I really like that scene, knowing that they're be you know, probably best friends for 30, 40 years going into this. But great reaction. He's like, I'm only playing Bubba. And Bubba's like, okay, all right, let me know how it goes. And he takes off. Then Fred comes in and he shows Lamont and he's like, this, this is going to cure me. And he's like, what is that? And he's all, here, smell it. He's all, oh, and he does that thing. It reminds me of Rollo when he smells the, uh, the the onion stew, whatever it was. And he's like, he makes that weird sound. Lamont's like, get that away from me. That thing reeks. And Fred's like, no, man, this is good. This is what it is. He said, Bubba's grandma passed it down and you put it on there and it's supposed to get rid of uh, anything. Remember, it can protect you from like pneumonia, uh, what a cold, all these other remedies that it's supposed to help you, including your teeth. That is the weirdest thing. I don't see how it could take care of all those things. So Lamont's like, no, that's nonsense. He's all, it reeks. Why would you even want that? He said, well, what's in it? He's like, it's a rotten egg, a uh, rotten egg shell, a rotten uh, yolk from an egg. Uh, what else does he say? It's also uh, a, a rotten garlic cro clove. I think, I think there's a rotten onion. There were several other things in there. It's so nasty just hearing it because it's all rotten. It's not like you put it in there fresh and you like the garlic smell. So you gotta imagine how bad this thing would stink. And Fred's got it tucked into the, the little ear bunny wrap. It's Fred and Lamont called him. And so when he's like, Lamont had told him earlier, he's like, what are you gonna do? Not go to the dentist and walk around with that thing around your head looking like a big dumb rabbit? He's like, I'm gonna start calling you Bugs Bunny. <laughs> what a great combination, Bugs Bunny and Fred. So Lamont's like, that's it. I'm leaving here. No, no, you know what? I'm leaving here. And if you don't feel better by the time I get home, I'm taking you to the dentist. And that's it, Pop. You know, I need my breakfast. I got to work. You got things to do. We're not going to waste any more time like this. So Fred's like, hey, you know, it's going to work. This is good. And he, Lamont takes off. And then Fred starts getting the, because even he knows, man, whew, it stinks. And he gets like the Lysol spray and even sprays the bag. So Lamont comes home. And when Lamont comes in, he's looking. He's all, hey, pop, pop. And he doesn't see him upstairs. And the door's closed. And he hears somebody. And it's like a guy. And he's like, you will feel no pain. And he's like, what the heck? So Lamont walks in. And it's his dad getting some guy trying to... <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny to see the links Fred will go to to avoid the dentist and a lot of people put in the comments if you're a person like that me personally I used to not have insurance when I was in my early 20s so I couldn't go to the dentist when I did I had so many 13 cavities they redid my mouth and because I had insurance then and I loved it I love the dentist I took the pain it's so much nice now to not have cavities and pain but I know what Fred's going through with the pain because I've had it where Philly fell out man you can't have anything but Fred doing everything he can to not go to the dentist is hysterical. So the guy's hypnotizing him and lo and he looks like it. Fred looks like he's like really zoned into it. And then Lamont goes, what is going on here? And it causes Fred to snap out of it. And he's all, you big dummy. <laughs> he calls him big dummy a couple times here. But he's like, you snapped me out of it. He's trying to hypnotize me out of pain. He's like, oh, you're a hypnotist? And I love the guy. His name's uh, Professor Poe or Professor Sylvester, as he tells Lamont. 
But he gets up and he's all, among other things, he said, oh really, what else are you? And he's all, I'm a, hairdress, a hairdresser, I'm an a astrologist. He says a bunch of things. Remember he even says that he's a, a minister, uh, an orthodox. I can't, he has so many different lists. It reminds me of Dr. Caldwell, but at least Caldwell was just at the post office. This guy's got a whole mess of things. So this is a, this is a guy where, to me, if you're so, have so many things, you're probably not good at too many of them. You know, it's like, hey, I'm 19 different things. Well, no, it'd be better to be a post, a, work at the post office and be a doctor, like Dr. Caldwell. So Lamont's like, it's, but this is nonsense. It's not going to work. You can't do that. And he's like, will you just stop? He said he was getting rid of my pain in my mouth. Now the pain has shifted down uh, much lower. <laughs> just putting Mont in his place, big dummy. So Lamont sits there and he's like, okay, let's see this. And so he starts doing it and he's saying, and the guy's hypnotizing him. And you can see Lamont's getting glossy eyed. And he's like, you will lift your right arm. And Fred doesn't do it. And then you see Lamont lift his right arm. And he's frozen stiff. And Lamont, and he's like, you need to concentrate, Mr. Sanford. And so he does it. And he's like, now lift your left arm. And Lamont does. You can see Lamont standing with both arms out like this. And Fred's, Fred's like, I can't feel it. I don't know. I'm just, I'm not getting it now. And he's getting frustrated. And he's like, well, it's because we got this big dummy. And then he looks over and he sees Lamont. And they both get up. And Fred's like, what is he doing? He's like, well, he's a willing subject. He's actually participating and he's hypnotized. And Fred's all, hey, tell him to fly. <laughs> this is top five funny. Tell him to fly out of here. You know, he looked like a bird ready to take off for a plane. And so he's like, no, we better get him out of this. So he tells him and he'll feel better and he snaps him out of it. And Lamont's like, see, this is ridiculous. You can't do this. And he's all, you were hypnotized. He's all, give me a break. And now this is the time where you go, you wish you had cell phones at that time. Because they could have recorded him and said, look, you fool. Look at, look at big dummy. But there is nothing like that. And so he doesn't believe it. And then Fred even says, man, they could have stuck tail feathers on you and you would have looked like a big dumb bird. And that's it. He's like, well, how do you feel, Mr. Sanford? I don't know why Fred says this. Fred should have been like, no, let, Lamont, get out of here. Let's try again. He's like, oh, I feel great, doctor. So he gets it out. And then he even, I love this. This is the top five funny with the doctor or the professor. And he's all, how much are you? He's all, well, because of interruption, he's fair. $2, not 10, Dr. Caldwell. $2. And he gives him two and he's all, and a shot of that. And he points to the alcohol <laughs> and he pours like whatever's left in the bottle. Here's a shot. He's got like three times the size of a shot and he just downs it, man. I don't know how he does that. Even Fred's shocked. And he's all, ah, he's all, I'm also an alcoholic. <laughs> all the things he lists. And then he even says, I'm also an alcoholic. <laughs> Such a good line. I love that. And we never see him again, remember? We know there's other professors, Professor Hide and Seek, if you remember the BB King episode, which we just watched live the other day. But, you know, he actually had a real one, Professor Poe. I would love to have seen him come back in another episode, but we don't get that. But he takes off. Very memorable character. And that's what I love about Sanford and Son. Every show has that. But Sanford and Son has some that are reoccurring or just have, they're so funny. It's so well written and so well uh, found. The actors, the actors fit their parts perfectly. So he takes off and Fred's like, man, I'm feeling great. Lamont's like, oh, you feel great? You should be able to eat, Pop. And he's all, yeah. He's like, no, nah, I'm not hungry. He's all, how about some water? Nice cold water. And this is true. I remember when I lost the filling of my tooth and I was drinking soda at a subway and the cold soda, oh, I didn't know. It hurt so bad. It felt like someone just put a laser beam in my gums. And so Fred's, I wouldn't have drank it. Or you have to just guzzle it straight through the throat. You can't put it in your mouth. But Fred does it and then he swishes it. Why? He knows it's going to hurt. And he makes the funniest face as he's trying to, he's doing that. And man, his face looks so bad. And Lamont's like, hey, it's perfect, Dad. You're good. We can go out to eat. You know, we have to worry about anything. and We don't have to go to the dentist. And he's like, tell me. Tell me you feel good. And he's just doing this. He reminds me of Gus. And Gus is like, yeah, yeah, I got the beer. And he takes off and he goes upstairs. He said, where are you going, Pop? And you can hear Fred close the door and yell loud. Ah, great scene. So that's it. He's got to get him to the dentist. So now they're at the dentist's office and Fred is not happy. He's like, you know what? We can't afford this. And he's like, it's a, it's a clinic, Pop. We get it. It's free. And then Fred's like, well, you know what? I still don't want it. And they hear the drills. He's like, man, it sounds like the th tools they use to work on airplanes. <laughs> and Lamont's like, don't worry. Everything will be fine. You know, we'll be good. We'll get through this. And he says, look, all right, I'll do it. But only on one condition. It has to be a white dentist. And Lamont's like, what? He said, Why do you, what makes you think there's black dentists here? And Fred's like, it's a free clinic, isn't it? You know, insinuating that's where they're going to get their starts. He said, you don't see a bunch of black dentists from Beverly Hills. <laughs> so he wants a white dentist. And he's like, how are you going to do that to your brotherhood? You're going to turn it. He said, look, man, I love my black brotherhood. He said, and I love drinking and cheering and, you know, hanging out and drinking a beer with them. But when it comes to my teeth, I want a white dentist. <laughs> and that's going to come back to bite him in the butt. 
So now they get ready to go, and in comes the the uh, receptionist. She comes down, and instantly, as soon as she sits, you already know what's going to happen, but you can see Fred's got his arms out, and he's leaning over the table, and he's got that grin. His tooth pain's gone now, and he's like, she's all, let me ask you a few questions. She's all, let me ask you a few questions. And he's all flirtatious, and you feel bad. I feel so embarrassed for Lamont again another time because Lamont's like, oh my gosh, Dad, you're old enough to be this girl's father, possibly grandfather, and here you are trying to hit on her when she's my age. And Lamont and them, they go back at it like they always do, right? And Fred's always telling them, don't you tell me what to do. I'm the pop. I'm the dad. Don't you tell me. And they go back and forth. And uh, anyways, the receptionist, she's like, yeah, we'll go. let's go inside where the dentist is ready to see you. And as they get ready to go, Fred's like, uh, where do these dentists come from? And she's like, oh, you know, local, learn local, but we do have some from Canada or even Mexico. And Fred's like, you got any from Africa? <laughs> you got any from Africa? Because <laughs> he doesn't want one from, it's so funny. And she's like, what? Lamont's like, no, no, forget it. And he's like, how embarrassing. So they go inside and he sits down and they're getting ready to go. And then she puts the little bib thing on him. So he doesn't get, you know, blood all over him or water. And he's like, what are we going to do now? Eat? <laughs> And she's like, he should have been asking her on a date right there. But then she's like, no, she takes off. And in comes the dentist. And it's it's a brother and Fred. And he comes in. He's like, hi, Mr. Sanford. Uh, let's get let's check you out and then we'll get you going. And Fred look, looks at him and does a double take. And he's all, I'm dead. <laughs> That's one of my favorite parts. When he does that and sees him in his face and he's like, I'm dead. And he goes to look at it. He's like, well, hey, hey, hold on. And he goes to look. He's like, wait, uh, you know what? I'm okay. I don't need it. I'm, I'm okay. I don't need this. He's like, well, if you're okay, then just let me look real quick. He said, no, 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 I'm good. I don't, you know, and, and he's trying to get, push it without saying it. And the guy's like, I think I know what's wrong. He said, excuse me, Mr. Sanford. And it, why, nicely and calmly, politely leaves. And then in comes the white dentist and he sits there and he's like, ah, oh, Mr. Sanford, we'll check this out real quick. Let me wash my hands. And this is top five funny. Fred's like, calls them on over and he's like, Hey, did you see that? He said, you see the difference there? And Lamont's all, yes, I see the difference. It's like night. <laughs> it's like night and day. <laughs> and Fred's all, no, I'm not talking about that. He wanted to wash his hands. He wants to be clean. He said, I like that. I like that with these people. And so he comes back and he goes to look at it. And, and before he's getting the tools, he's like, oh, I bet your dad was a dentist. And he's like, no, no, my dad was a, I think he was a contractor, you know, uh, worked with tools and stuff. And he's like, oh, um, well, you went to college. He's uh, not at first. I actually went through a, a correspondent program. And that's exactly what Fred said the black dentists do. And he says, they don't go to college. These guys go to Harvard. White guys go. And so he's like, what? And then he, Lamont's trying not to laugh. And Fred's like, but then you went. And he's like, yes, then I went to college. And he goes, oh, Harvard or Yale? <laughs> and he's like, no, it was a, a night school, a community college. So everything Fred has put on an unfair, on stereotype on a black dentist is actually everything on this white dentist. It is so comical because you can't judge a book by its cover and that's what Fred did. And so he's like, you know what? He finally gets to look at it and he's like, no. He said, this is this is serious. Let me go talk to something. I'll be, I want to check something. And then Lamont, rightly, rightly so, starts laughing. He said, ha ha, he said, you like that fool? Night school. He said, see, you make it a fool yourself and here you are trying to get the, getting rid of a, another dentist just to get this, this guy who's no better. When actually the other dentist is better. So he comes in, he's like, I'm sorry, Mr. Sanford. Uh, what you have is a serious uh, situation. I can't, it's it's beyond me. We're gonna get our, I want you to get the best care. We're gonna get our best doctor in here right now. And in he comes, the black dentist. Oh man. And the lot even laughs as he sees him because Fred doesn't see him yet. The audience sees him, they're laughing. Then Fred looks over and sees it's him. And now he's like, he feels so dumb. He feels so stupid. And he does this little turn look and he's got that half side grin, which I love. And he's all, hey, bro. <laughs> he's all, hey, brother. Oh, man, it is so good. And he's like, now, Mr. Sanford, will you open your mouth so you can get your foot out of it before I look at it? Great line, great scene. And it teaches everybody lesson, but especially Fred with his stereotypes and his prejudice and trying to, to think that he knows everything based on just the color. And great ending right there. Then we get to the, the final ending right there where Lamont comes home and Fred's happy. He's in a great mood. Lamont's in a good mood because things are probably back to normal where Fred's cooking. And he's got the mail and they sit down and then Fred's like, they're going through it. And Fred's on, you know, he's excited. Hey, I feel great. He's so glad he went to this dentist. It was a good idea. And he admits to it. And then he, Fred's like, hey, you know what? Or Lamont's like, hey, you got $5, $5. And he's like, hey, that's funny. He said, you know what they say? And it's weird. He calls it the good fairy. I don't know what that's from, but he said, instead of the tooth fairy, 
He saw, oh, the good fairy, you put your tooth that you get removed under your pillow and you get money. And Fred just got money, so he sits down next to the money. He's all, you must be the good fairy. <laughs> you got the good fairy. You're giving me my money. And Lamont just has this weird look. And then even Lamont kind of laughs afterwards, but gives him the $5 check and it ends. So great episode. It's very, it's, I wonder if it's forgotten. And the Sanford and Son diehards like all of us. We know it. We always love it. We know all of them. But there are, like I said, this is one I probably would say I have probably watched six, seven times or less. Now, I know you go, wait a minute, how could you be a diehard fan and only seen this one six or seven times? Well, you've been a fan of something for over 25, 30 years. Yeah, this is one I've watched the least. There's other episodes I've probably seen about 80 times, you know, where you're like, that's it. That's what I want to see. So that's why. But I like it because when I am like that, you go back and you rewatch them. You forget things or it's even funnier because you feel like it's kind of a new episode, even though it's not as opposed to the other ones you feel comforted and you've seen 400 times or whatever. So great episode. Uh, I wouldn't put top 20, but I wouldn't put bottom 20 either. It's in there uh, among the, the, the very well done episodes. It's a very good episode. So let's get to uh, our fun facts. There's only one, and this is only I can find on it, and this is interesting. So Fred's theory, the whole theory behind that where Fred's like, hey, the, the black dentist is not as good as the white dentist. The white will be better because of their schooling is based on an actual theory that happened to one of the writers. The writer's name was uh, Alunga Adele. I believe it, Alunga Adele's grandmother, she was like that. She didn't ever want to go to a black doctor. She always wanted to go to a white doctor because she felt the white doctors were more schooled or better than the blacks. So the writer actually took that and applied it to this episode. So that's pretty funny that it actually came from a real life person and perspective on that. So I'm glad that, that they put that in there and that we got to find that out. So that's it for fun facts, familiar faces. We got Ray Oliver. That was the person who played Professor Sylvester Poe. He was also in Private Benjamin, something called Snoops, Hill Street Blues. That's a big show. And one of the biggest was, and someone even commented to this in, I just put this trivia question out about this episode. And someone in the comments wrote that he was also in the movie Child's Play, the very first one with Chucky. And that is true. I was going to say that. So he was in the movie Child's Play, the very first one with Chucky. Very cool. You can go watch that and find him in it. But those are the big things that he was from. Another one is the secret, the receptionist, and her name was Elenari. I can't even pronounce it. Elorenio? Elorenio? It's just one name, kind of like Prince. <laughs> Elorenio, she was the receptionist. She was in something called Sneakers. Got, oh no, I'm sorry, Get Smart. Without my glasses, I struggle sometimes. Get Smart. House Party. We know that. I remember that as a, a, in junior high. House Party. And... Young Doctors in Love. I don't know what that is. But anything I can find, you always see pictures on it. But that's what she's from. I don't know her. I don't I don't even recognize, remember her from House Party. So that's why I'm like, I don't really recognize her other than Sanford and Son. The next one is we got uh, Sid McCoy. And we know what he's from. The Soul Train. I didn't even know that watching Soul. I would... If you're if you're young or if you're older, you'll probably watch it. But I was a kid, so sometimes I would pop Soul Train on on KTLA here in SoCal on Channel 5. I would watch Soul Train just to hear some of the cool songs, right? It's like I didn't care if they were dancing or not. But I always look to and wonder, man, how do you get in there? You go in there. Do you have to? Do they approve you? Because some of the guys look cool and some of the chicks look hot. And I'm like, I don't know how you even, where to begin. You know, I'm just a, a junior high kid watching it or whatever. But I always liked the music on it. And I remember the host. He had such a good voice. That's him. So yeah, it was so cool to see him on Soul Train. This is one of the first things I remember him from. He also did other things called Silver. He did the Bill Cosby show. We all know that. So he was in that. Julia, Colossus, The Forbidden Project or Forbidden Project, whatever it was. But those are some of the other projects he had worked on or movies, shows. But everyone knows him from Sanford and Son or The Soul Train. And our last one was Hal England. He was the second dentist, the white one. He came in, and, and I, I can vision him. He was from Hang'em High, if you've ever watched that with Clint Eastwood. I can remember a couple guys who resemble him who were all dirty, uh, dirty cowboys, so that could have been him. Wonder Woman and Quantum Leap, the, the actual good Quantum Leap. I haven't seen the new one, but the original, obviously, Quantum Leap. So those are the things he's been in. So that is it with this episode. Thank you so much uh, for watching. Like, subscribe, and continue to, to hang out with our community from Trivia, all the different things we offer. But thank you guys so much as we continue to grow as a channel. I really love Sanford and Son, and I'm so thankful for everybody who joins our channel and puts it out there, comments their thoughts. In this video, please comment. 
any of your favorite lines I forgot because there are a, a lot of good lines in this. Sometimes I don't touch every single line, uh, but anything on there that I might have forgot or something you love, comment below. And have a great day. Be safe. Look for more trivia and polls, and we will see you on Friday. Talk to you later. Peace.